the, the project that I'm working on is a 12-ton walking excavator, and I'm not going to talk too much about what we do with the machine or uh, what kind of sensors, what kind of actuation we have with the machine, because it's essentially, or in, in the basics, it's the same as any other robot that's, that we have at our lab. So this is really something that we focus on, is that we use all the tools that we have around that we use them also uh, on a newly created robot. So we don't really want to start from scratch all the time. For example, if we need mapping algorithms, then we always take uh, the same tools that we have already de developed and then um, adapt them to, to what we need. And so this is then the way of, the way how we can actually uh, develop such a robot quite quickly. So, as I said, I'm, I'm not going to talk too much about the robot itself, but more about uh, how we actually do simulations with, uh, with an excavator. Because what we, what we want to do is that we have this um, task or this landscape that an architect gives us, and then we want to somehow autonomously recreate that landscape uh, with a walking excavator. But here in between, there's a lot. There's planning, there's control. And before we actually have the machine, we already want to get started. So we need some kind of simulation um, to already develop these algorithms. And so this is the excavator that we have up now at Hönkeberg. It's fully equipped with here a laser scanner, for example. It has a GPS. It has an IMU in the chassis. Uh, the entire rig suit of uh, of sensors that you also have, for example, on animal or husky. But it's it's important that we can also simulate the soil with a with an excavator because that's essentially what it does is it, it digs right. And these are the three mostly used simulators uh, mm -hmm. currently together with ROS. And that's for example gazebo that that you used. There's VRAP and there's WebOps. Um, but these are only the, the, the front ends. And in the background, there's always a, a physics engine running, the same as uh, you have in every, every computer game. And in Gazebo, you have the options between ODE and Bullet, <coughs> which are already pre-installed uh, via Debian. And then you also have the possibility to use Dart or Synbody. But if you want to use those two, you need to um, compile Gazebo from source and then install it that way. I'm also not going to go too much into details about the differences, but all of them do not have any possibility on, on, do, on doing any earthwork. VRAP has also ODE and Bullet, and additionally also Vortex and Newton Dynamics. Now, Vortex is, is the one that I'll then show as the solution to our problem, but here, integrated into VRAP, it, it doesn't allow us to use the, the Earthwork plugin because it, it, it's not routed through the front end. WebOts, on the other hand, only has ODE in the background, and I think there's, uh, it's also not for free. It might be for free if you're uh, a DTH. So there's, no simulator around that has any ROS integration that we could use for our excavator. And this is the reason why we, I started to, or did the a ROS integration for the uh, Vortex Dynamics simulation framework. And Vortex Dynamics has the advantages that it, it does, for example, uh, simulation of entire ships. So it, it simulates the, the waves on the ocean and then the influence on the, on the motion of the ship. Uh, you can also simulate underwater uh, vehicles also with, with cables attached to it. So if, if it needs, for example, to drag an undersea cable, then you can simulate that with Vortex. But most importantly, it's, it's uh, for, for us the lower part here. <laughs> it has a simulation also for soil. You can see this here, uh, the excavator that dug a trench and not too good here that there's a hole and some soil also in the shovel. 
if you want, or the reason why there's not too many simulators around that actually do earthwork simulation is that if you need, if you want to properly simulate soil, then you would need to do it as a particle simulation. And a construction site is maybe, if you take a small one, it's maybe 20 by 20 meters. But to accurately then simulate all the soil, you would need millions and millions of particles, right? And there's no way that you'll get this uh, to run real time. And for simulation, for us, it's it's not, uh, it does not have to be real time, but it's really nice if you if you code something, you start up your uh, your simulation, and then you immediately see how it how it behaves. If it would not be real time, it would take two or three hours to, to let it run. It would just be really tedious to work on. The way Vortex does this is that it, yeah, <laughs> it uses it uses only particles when <coughs> when the soil is in the shovel or when when the the shovel is is in the ground it creates particles around the shovel <coughs> and all the other areas where the shovel does not interact with with the ground there the soils are are um, merged into a mesh in a simple surface mesh and this reduces then the, the number of particles that you need to to simulate drastically so you only have the particles in the shovel or around the shovel there's some trade-offs um, into to how accurate the simulation of this is, because if you merge it into a mesh, what then happens with the particles? It's yeah, it's a bit bit uh, not too accurate probably, but it's still better to have it real time this way than yeah, have it have it really accurate and then waiting for three hours to for the for the simulation to finish. So this Vortex does not have a ROS integration. So I'll quickly list here the points that you need to do if you if you want to have a new simulator together with ROS. Since most of the simulation frameworks allow you to interact with the simulation uh, plugin based. So you can write plugins that then um, you can load together with the simulation and that is, is a does normally not require you to compile the entire simulation fr framework from source. But you have already used in gazebo laser scanners, you have used an IMU, you might want to use a camera in the future, there's uh, also a ton of other sensors, and if you have now a simulation framework that's not already integrated, <coughs> you need to write a plugin yourself for each single sensor. And you could just write a simple plugin, but then if you want to use this sensor for state estimation, you might always also want realistic noise characteristics. And you need to implement how the noise of the sensor actually looks like, and then it gets uh, a lot a lot more work. And you've also seen that in uh, together with Gazebo, the Husky loads its description when you start it up. So the, the robot shown in the simulation is, is defined in the URDF. And if you change the URDF, you start off the simulation, you have a different robot in your simulation. If you want to do this now with, with uh, any other simulator, then you would need to write this URDF parser your, uh, yourself also. Then, uh, lastly, you also need a plugin for your robot. Uh, the plugin for your robot does that would be here, for example, the M5 5 plugin uh, of the excavator would then take in actuator commands from any control or uh, state estimation framework, and it would return the state of the robot. So the state of the robot is uh, how are my uh, joints positioned, what kind of velocities and forces do I have in my joints, and what is the, the, the base pose of the robot. And there are also uh, some sensors here, for example, an IMU, uh, GPS sensors, which then communicate over these ROS messages, for example, an FSET fix for GPS or the IMU uh, topic for the IMU to this control and state estimation framework. To do the, uh, the entire 
excavation planning, we also need to know the elevation map of our construction site. So how does how does the terrain look like? And we get this directly from the simulation. So we, we read out the, the elevation map and then publish publish it as a grid map. You've already seen a grid map in, in Peter's presentation. And this then goes into the planning framework, uh, which provides a goal to the to the control framework. And also very handy is if if you have a simulation or you also write a simulation plugin where you could, for example, start, stop, pause, or reset uh, reset your, your simulation. Why does this actually have to be ROS, or why, in our case, is this entire communication done by ROS? Uh, the the simple answer to that is that you could you can now just simply switch to the to the actual excavate because this interface here it's it's going to be the same, and it doesn't matter if it runs with Gazebo, it doesn't matter if it runs with uh, Vortex, or it, and it also doesn't matter if it's the real machine. So all our our software that we do can then run together with the simulation or the real machine. So the, the video here shows, shows vortex at the top. And you can see here the, the particles that are formed um, around the shovel. And this entire area here is a mesh and then when they drop down they get merged into the mesh again so this is what i what i talked about before and at the bottom is arvis together with the robot model and this desired surface here is is the plan or the yes the desired surface that we actually want to excavate and then the rest here is is a uh, the actual surface extracted from the simulation then you can see here the trajectory of the shovel that's planned, and the excavator now continues to, to dig out this area. First, so this, the way it digs now is, is completely force controlled. The same as uh, animal, when an animal walks, it, it has uncertainties about the ground. So it's it, it's not just a joint position that is end, but rather a, an end effect of force. And for the excavator, it's it's the exact same thing that we try or we do we produce end effect of forces on the shovel and not positions. Except here in this last step where we do a refinement, here we actually send positions to to the shovel and we try to follow the position here as close as possible. This is possible because now. There's not too much of disturbance coming from the soil because it's already excavated nearly completely to, to the desired surface. 